over time, when your career is about getting laughs, you're training your subconscious to require validation at a high level. That's true. What's that like? Well, that, that it, it's sort of a great way to go through life. Yeah. You are looking for the humor in everything. There is no tragic event that you that doesn't have some lightness to it ev eventually, what's, not always at, at that moment. What's the comedic math? What's the algorithm for too soon? Well, you know, too soon is how good a comedian you are. You, if you do it too soon, you're not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. your, your job is to not do it too soon. And I did a lot of stuff too soon. I did a lot, really, those Tonight Shows I did were too soon, but not, not for Carson. Right. He thought I was right on the money for him, even though the audience wasn't. So inside nothing. comedy, you're, you're really getting inside the heads of these people, right? Yes. Inside comedy is, you know, I, when I started out, George, doing stand-up, I, because I have no range whatsoever, I can't do impressions, I don't sing, I just sort of talk like this. And my goal is always to make the audience laugh and to surprise them so they never know where I'm going to be funny. But I couldn't work big rooms, so they had me opening for jazz musicians. And I opened for amazing, like, modern jazz quartet, Bill Evans, uh, Herbie Mann, Thelonious Monk. I was the opening act for these guys. And I saw when another musician, as famous as them or as good as them, when they showed up, their connection was so deep, they understood each other's music, they talked differently, almost a language that I didn't understand even though it was English. And I fell in love with that atmosphere and I thought, you know, comedy, the comedians, not just stand-up, but all comedy atmosphere feels like that. I want a show that shows that comedy is like that. And that's what inside comedy is. It's not about people saying, I played the toilets, I had the worst audience. I did it's not that at all. It's about just the connections with other comedians. You know, I'll have Jerry Seinfeld will be on a show with Don Rickles. And the way that came about is I interviewed Don Rickles and he appropriately, you know, put me down for at least 20 minutes. Yeah, that's just <laughs> yeah. Steve, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a hockey puck. I can't tell you how many things he used. That was hilarious <laughs> and all that. And then four months later, I interviewed Jerry Seinfeld in the Hamptons. And I was about to st just improvise an interview in much the same way you do. And, and uh, I said, Jerry, he said, David, before you say anything, I, I just want I wa I to tell you that last night, Chris Rock and I went to see Don Rickles. If there is any white light of comedy coming from someone. It is Don Rickles. We couldn't get over how that was. I thought, I'm going back and I'm going to put these two people together. Right. And it was amazing how there were rhythms and things, even with Rickles and Seinfeld. It's bizarre saying. if you watch Rickles today, and, I, and he makes me laugh, and I, because I've consumed so much comedy in my life, I yes. put it in a place. But to a younger generation, it's slightly more, or less afraid, slightly less racist comedy. Yes. Jesus, a Rickles show is really uncomfortable. Yes. It's like we're watching Eddie Murphy's Delirious today. Yes. Some of it feels like it borders on hate. It's so over the line. Yes, yes. The times change. Yeah. <laughs> they do change. I mean, Eddie Murphy was as dynamic a stand-up comedian as there ever was. Yeah. And then you get a guy like Cosby, and Cosby is probably the best technician that there ever he creates pictures that if you see his act from 1971 now, it'll still work.